Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. I hope everybody's enjoying this beautiful Sabbath provided by the Most High, Ahaya, Shur Ahaya. My name is uh, Yaakov. This is Brother Amar. And today is going to be a quick study entitled Make No Provision for the Flesh. Um, it's a follow up from the beautiful study given last night by Akasav, um, uh, rededicating uh, the temple as it pertains to. Um, our fleshly temple being rededicated onto Christ. So uh, that's what the study is about. I'm going to tie in the rededication and how we are not to make provisions for the flesh. Okay. All right. So we just going to jump right in. <clears throat> We're going to start off in the book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 1. The book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 1. Again, the title is Make No Provision for the Flesh, um, because in doing so, this is pretty much the situation of our people. All right. <clears throat> the book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, mm -hmm. for the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, mm -hmm. because there is no truth, mm -hmm. no mercy, mercy, nor knowledge of a higher in the land. Come, come. So the Most High say, "Hear the word of the Hear the word, ye children of Israel, for he has a controversy. Right? The controversy is no truth, no mercy, no knowledge of a high in the land. Mm. Right? But we got to stop and think about why is he choosing Israel? Right? Why? Why not any other nation? So we got to establish why he feels necessary to be speaking to Israel exclusively. Right? So in order to do that." We need to let the scriptures show us why. So with that, we're going to go to uh, Psalms uh, 135 and 4. Psalms 135 and 4. Because he can have a controversy with anyone if he wanted, right? He's the most high. But he's talking to Israel specifically. And there's a reason for that. Right. Psalms chapter 135 verse 4. For the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself. Mm -hmm. And Israel for his peculiar treasure. Mm -hmm. So again, he chose Jacob onto himself, right? Jacob close to him, right? Israel is particular treasure, right? Not not any other nation. Israel, right? Let's keep it going. Um, so Israel is the people he's chose unto himself, right? Let's see what kind of people we supposed to be. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse six, and uh, you can read it. Six through seven, mm -hmm. right? So remember, he got a controversy with Israel, the people he chose close to him. Obviously, we're supposed to do something that we're not doing, <coughs> right? All right? Deuteronomy chapter six, verse seven. Um, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Salakia, so Salakia, yeah, so yeah. uh, chapter seven, verse right. six through seven. Salakia, so one four. Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse six. For thou art a holy people mm -hmm. unto the Lord thy power. Mm -hmm. The Lord thy power hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself mm -hmm. above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Come, get it for me one more time, huh? For thou art a holy people. A holy people, right? Unto the Lord thy power. Come. The Lord thy power hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself mm -hmm. above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So above all people upon the face of the earth, out of all the nations, he chose <clears throat> Jacob, Israel, to be close to him, to be as a holy people to him, right? We're going to keep it going. Uh, verse 7, the Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because ye, are, ye were more in number mm -hmm. than any people, Come. for ye were the fewest of all people. Mm -hmm. So the Lord did not set his love upon you. Nor choose you because you were more in number than any people, but you were fewest of all, right? I think the key word there is love, right? Being chosen to be a special people close to him, that's a special kind of love. And remember, all nations is not getting this. Just Israel first and foremost, right? Come. Mm -hmm. So we're going to keep going and uh, see what kind of holy people, as Salak is, chosen as his holy people, right? Him, him bestowing his love on us um, we're supposed to be a particular type of uh, holy people 
<coughs> we're going to find that out um, exactly what type of people we're supposed to be, quote unquote, holy, what that means, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to go to uh, the book of Leviticus, chapter 20, verse 26. The book of Leviticus, chapter 20, verse 26. Right? He got a controversy, remember. It's a controversy because there's no truth, there's no mercy, there's no, no knowledge of a high end of the land. Right? That controversy, remember, is with Israel. Right? Israel, who he chose to be close to him. Right? He said his love upon Israel to be a holy people. And as holy people, we are um, uh, prescribed to do or act in a certain way. Right? So we're going to bring it up. Uh, Leviticus chapter 20 and you can pick it up at uh, chapter um, Salaki verse 26 alright Leviticus chapter 20 verse 26 and ye shall be holy unto me mm -hmm. for I the Lord am holy and have severed you from other people mm. that ye should be mine one more time huh? and ye shall be holy unto me mm -hmm. for I the Lord am holy Come. and have severed you from among uh, Salaki, and have severed you from other people that ye should be mine. Uh, uh, so we are holy people, right? A holy people that's severed. Um, or basically, you could say set apart. Right? We are holy people to be set apart from other nations, meaning we can't operate like other nations, right? We gotta, <clears throat> Salaki, we have to um, be mindful of, of special ordinances from the Most High. Other nations don't have this decree, right? Again, there's a controversy he got with Israel because we have no truth, no mercy, no knowledge in the land, right? So we're going to keep it moving, right? So we got to figure out um, if we're severed from him, right? Or severed from other people and that we should be his. So how do we serve him as a holy people? Mm. How do we serve him as a holy people? Let's find out what the scriptures say. Let's go to Deuteronomy the book of Deuteronomy chapter 10 and we could pick it up from 12 and we could read it through uh, 13. The book, uh, of see, so like the book of Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12 through 13. Alright. So this is Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12. And now Israel, what doeth the Lord thy power require of thee? Hmm. But to fear the Lord mm -hmm. thy power. To walk in all his ways. Mm -hmm. And to love him and to serve the Lord thy power with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Mm -hmm. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes which I command thee this day for thy, for thy good. For thy good. Crystal clear, <clears throat> right? Those are specific instructions, right? Again, we the people that he chose to be close to him, right? <laughs> a special people yes. severed from the other nations, a holy people. As a holy people... We have to serve him in, particular, in a particular way, right? This pretty much tells us what that particular way is, right? It says, And now, Israel, what doeth the Lord thy power require of thee but to fear the Lord? Mm. We know that fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding and wisdom, right? To walk in all his ways. <coughs> Those are the statute laws and commandments, the ordinance, the dietary laws, you know, the civil laws, the ceremonial laws. Um, and to serve him, with all thy heart, all thy soul, right? There's a question mark behind that, you know. Yasharal is still working on that one, right? 13 says to keep the commandments of the Lord and the statutes which I command thee this day for thy good. So operating in this manner is for our good, okay. right? It's for the complete good of Yasharal, <clears throat> right? Again, I'm going to keep saying this, right? He got a controversy with Yasharal. Because things not good, things not looking good for Yasharala right now, right? We're trying to get that right. So there's a controversy because we're not following this requirement. It says, what doeth the Lord require of thee, right? So we're not holding our end of the bargain, right? Um, we're going to keep him moving, right? So we got to keep walking in his ways, keep his commandments. And there's some benefits uh, being his chosen people, right? So doing this, we get wisdom and understanding. And to uh, to keep going in that in that vein, we're gonna go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter four, verse six. Right? <clears throat> chapter four, verse six. Deuteronomy, chapter four, verse six. Keep therefore and do them, mm -hmm. 
For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Come. So doing the commandments, following his statutes, his laws, and walking in his ways, he gives us wisdom, right? This pretty much confirms it, Deuteronomy chapter 6, right? It says, keep therefore and do them, the law, statutes, and commandments, right? For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, right? So we kind of fell away from that. The nations don't even trip because we're not doing that. But once we do that, we will be that example to the nations, right? That's what we're supposed to be doing. That's part of the controversy because there's no love, no <coughs> truth, no mercy, mm. you know, and no knowledge of the Most High, mm -hmm. right? Because we're not doing these commandments, right? So the nation's looking at us in a funny kind of way. That's not really how it's supposed to be, though, right? So we got to kind of get back to what's going on as it was prescribed to us by the Most High, right? So I just want to precept that real quick. Can we go to... Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6 and we're going to pick it up at verse 24 and you can read it through 25 <clears throat> so I'm just kind of setting up a foundation right the, the, the name of the study is you know make no provisions for the flesh right which um, obviously we have been making provisions for the flesh that's why we're in this position and this ties into um, the feast of dedication that just, just happened right we're supposed to rededicate our temple and in doing so, you know, we make no provisions for the flesh. Okay. So I just want to make a found, you know, <clears throat> set a foundation because we're not, um, we, we, so like we are making provisions for the flesh, right? And this is part of the Lord's controversy. All right. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 24. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our power. One more time, huh? And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord, our power. That's the second time we heard fear. For our good always. For our good always. The second, second time is for our good. That he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. As it is at this day. Come. Right? Thank you. Salaki. I'm up for it. Salaki. And, we, and it's, again, it's, it's crystal clear, right? It's crystal clear. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear him. There is no fear of the Most High, because if it is, we would be keeping these statute laws and commandments. We would be building our brothers and sisters up, right? We would, be, we would be holding each other accountable when we slack in these things, right? But this is not happening. So this is part of the controversy, right? And it's for our good always. It's for our good always, right? That he might preserve us alive. <coughs> Again, because we're not doing these things, it's part of the reason why Yasharal is getting knocked off. It's part of the reason why we got to go through these pestilences, these diseases, you know, all this uh, lamentations, right? As it is at this day. So this is current things happening because we're not following our end of the bargain, right? You can uh, bring in 25. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. <clears throat> and it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our power, as he hath commanded us. Man, I'm going to let that one mm. sit. I'm going to let that one sit for a minute, mm -hmm. right? And it shall be our righteousness. Our righteousness. That's telling us right there how we attain our righteousness, right? We got to be obedient and keep these statute laws and commandments, right? Again, we're not doing that. So Hosea 4 and 1, the Lord say, Hear the word of the children of Israel for the Lord has a controversy. You see why he's having a controversy. He given us all these instructions to live righteously, mm. right? He can't understand it, you know. He can't understand it. Like a parent talking to their child, you, you set him up, him or her, you set him up with instructions, you know, so life would be easy. But for some reason they go against it. You can't understand why because you're taking the time to, you know, spell it out for them so it'll go easy. Mm. So you're going to have a controversy too on earth as it is in heaven, right? We're going to keep on moving though, right? <clears throat> so the Most High chose us for his special people, right? He commanded us to keep the charges, you know, keep on the law, statutes, and commandments. You know, they give us wisdom and understanding, right? So we're getting all this as a foundation, right? So then the question comes up, well, you know, so what are we supposed to do with this gift? Because that's what it really is, right? That's what it really is. He gifted us with all these statute laws and commandments. He gifted us by choosing us 
to be a people unto him, a holy people, right? So what do we do to, with this gift, right, once we really realize that it is a gift? Well, let's again go to the scriptures and see what they say. Let's go to St. John chapter 15, verse 16, and we're going to see what we're supposed to be doing with this gift. Again, the title is Make No Provision for the Flesh, right? When we make no pr provision for the <coughs> flesh, we, re we rededicate, you know, our temple, mm. right? Uh, St. <clears throat> John chapter 15, verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, mm. but I have chosen you. There it is again. And ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. And that your fruit should remain. Mm. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Mm. These things I command you, that ye love one another. Con, con. So again, ye have not chosen me. We didn't choose the Most High, right? The Most High chose us. Mm to be a special people. I know it sounds repetitive, but I feel like it's got to be this way so Yahshua I can get the point. Like, we got to get back on track. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, just to feed off that too, man, you know, <clears throat> it just shows, man, that, you know, it, it explains why not everybody gets it. Uh -huh. Not everybody wakes up to this understanding. Uh -huh. And it's very, uh, it's, it's a very selective thing that uh -huh. the Most High is doing. Right. You know, so for me, it's a, uh, <clears throat> it's a, uh, to see uh, the most high polished jewel, and then somebody just dump it back in the mud for no reason, or because of making provision for the flesh. It's huh. it's a terrible thing, huh. man. And uh, you know, according to Hebrews ten, you know that's 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 considering the blood of Yasha huh. uh, as an unholy thing. Huh. You know, and that's Trying a underfoot. big issue. Huh. Huh. It's not a light thing, huh. you know. So that's part of the Lord's controversy too. Huh. You know what I mean? Like He can understand why we in this position, in this state, huh. because He's given us these gifts, right? With these gifts to make the whole world a right, we supposed to go out and bring fruit, right? That the fruit should remain. So that's why we out, you know, in the streets preaching. That's why we doing this broadcast, right? Because huh. we trying to bring in more fruit. We don't want to be on the wrong side of this thing, right? We scared of that. Hmm. We don't need those kind of problems. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm going to read it from the top, right? Verse 16 say, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you, right? So we've been ordered to act a certain way, to do a certain thing, right? <clears throat> that certain thing is that we should go out and bring forth fruit, right? We got to pass the Gospels, right? Hey, y'all need to be keeping these statutes, laws, and commandments, right? You are the true Jews, right? As true Jews, you're supposed to be acting in a certain way. You are holy people, right? We're here to let you know. That's the good fruit, right? Hopefully, right? That's our, that's our job, to bring that good fruit, right? And that it should remain. So we can't be telling this to people and then they fall back into the world, right? We can't have that, right? So I'm going to keep keep it going, right? I'm going to precept that, right? Because uh, we want to, I want to make sure that people know that they are a holy people, right? So we're gonna precept that with First Peter, First Peter two and nine. First Peter two and nine. We are holy people ordained to bring forth fruit, right? First <clears throat> uh, Peter chapter two verse nine. But ye are a chosen generation, mm -hmm. a royal priesthood, a holy nation, mm -hmm. a peculiar people. That ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Good fruit. Time. Good fruit. Right? You are a chosen <coughs> generation. There's no accident. There's no accident that he's putting this responsibility on us. Right? It's no accident that it makes sense to you. Mm. If it makes sense to you, this is what you're supposed to be doing. This is your first job. Mm. Right? Nothing else comes before this. Right? I know we're in the world. We got to make ends meet. I get it. But it don't come before the most high. Because the most high can take it away. Right? Then you're going to be in another position that you don't want to be in. Right? Uh, so, again. Oh, I was just going to say, uh, like the scriptures say, man, um, you know, to whom much is given, much is required. Come. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, definitely the most high is not just giving you 
uh, uh, this understanding just to be dormant with Calm. it. You know what I mean? Calm. It's to do something with it. So. Calm. All praise that you said that because, yeah. you know, I, I bear witness on that, right? So, I, you know, I was blessed to, to have the understanding, you know, and, you know, I was... I wasn't sitting on it like full time, but you know, I wasn't all the way in like I, you know, like I was supposed to be, in, right? And you know, for a hot second, most high, you know, he checked me out. All praise, he checked me back in, mm. right? So I'm just saying that because it, it can happen to anybody, right? You think you think you're doing cool, you're having it your way, you know, you don't want to cross the most high like that, man. I just mm. bear witness on that, right? Come on, so we gonna. Uh, we're going to keep it going. Like, I just want to hammer home, give some more examples of what our job is, our jobs are as a chosen people who are holy unto the Most High, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to go to uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. Again, just setting a foundation about why he picked Yasharala, right? Yasharala is chosen for a specific reason. To do specific things, right? So Matthew chapter twenty-eight, <clears throat> verse nineteen. All right, Matthew chapter <clears throat> twenty-eight, verse nineteen. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, mm -hmm. baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Come. And lo, I am with you always, even on to the end of the world. Come. So be it. Come, come. So again, we're supposed to go out, teach all nations, right? Yasharala first, but all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? Come. Teaching them what? That these statute laws and commandments are supposed to be the first order of business, how you operate in your daily life, come. right? Remember, it's safe for our righteousness and for our good to be preserved alive always, Come. right? So we got to be doing this stuff for like for Yashuala first and then the other nations, mm -hmm. right? And I don't want this to come across like, you know, Yashuala is more important in a sense it is, but everything is all under Christ. So I don't want to, you know, <clears throat> make less of that point. But um, just to drive it home, right, it's Yashuala and then the Gentiles, we're going to go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 49, uh, verse 5, verse 5 and 6. Isaiah 49. Mm -hmm. Verse 5, verse 6. So again, you know, earlier I said, you know, it's Yasharala and then the, then the other nations, right? And I'm not just saying that. That's the order that was given by the Most High, right? 5 and 6. Uh-huh. <coughs> Isaiah chapter 49 verse 5 And now saith the Lord that formed me in the womb to be a, to be his servant To bring Jacob again to him mm. Though Israel be not gathered Yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord mm -hmm. And my power shall be my strength Let me stop you right there mm -hmm. right. So let's say and now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant Right we are his servant we are his servant. We get that um, in Leviticus 25, 55. I don't think I did 25, 55, huh? Uh, Let me just go back and get that real quick, right? So it's saying, now saith the Most High that formed me from the womb to be a servant, right? So when I go back to Leviticus, you know, 55, 25 and 55, it reads, for unto me the children of Israel are servants. They are my servants who I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. So from the womb, we are ordained to be his servants, even in the Old Testament, right? Mm. So coming back, coming back to Isaiah, right? And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, right? Um, to bring Jacob again to him. Right now, we far away from the Most High. Why? Because we have given <coughs> provisions for the flesh, Right? And doing that does what? Creates a controversy between us and the Most High. Right? Go ahead and get uh, verse 6. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant um, to raise up the tribes of Jacob 
right. and to restore the preserved of Israel. Okay. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, mm -hmm. that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Mm. Wow. One more time. Uh, one more time. Six. And, and he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the preserved of Israel. Mm -hmm. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, <clears throat> that thou mayest be my, my salvation. On to the end of the earth. Water, water. So again, I don't want it to come across like, you know, it's it's my my personal thing about Israel first and, and the Gentiles second. This is what the scriptures say, and this is pretty much our job description, right? To bring Jacob back again, right? So we can get rid of this controversy. Mm. Right? We don't need this controversy hanging on over, over our heads as long as it's been. All right, so we got to bring Jacob back into the knowledge that we got to keep these statute laws and commandments, right? Okay. And then once that's complete, we can get the <coughs> Gentiles and help them along the way. But we got to restore the house first, yeah. right? So because we're not doing our jobs, right, that was ordained, that we were, were ordained to do, right? Because we're not keeping the commandments, which is the truth, right, which is the word, the word which is Christ, and if we're not walking in Christ, then we're not being merciful, right? If we're not being merciful, then how can we have knowledge of a high end of the land, right? How can he be glorified? This is the controversy in a nutshell, right? That's why he's saying that in Hosea 4. He's talking to us because there's no truth, no mercy, no knowledge of a high end of the land because we've gotten away from this, right? Mm. We've gotten away from this because we make provisions for the flesh. Right. Um, so this is pretty much again why the Most High has a controversy with with us, right? Um, and because we're not following, the, because we're not allowing provisions of the flesh to, to separate us uh, from our our calling, then we're guilty of um, going against Romans uh, thirteen and fourteen. So let's let's just bring that out real quick. Mm -hmm. Romans 13 and 14. <clears throat> right? Make no provisions for the flesh. In doing so, put us in a bad situation, currently and in the past, right? No new thing under the sun. Yasharad have been going through, through this for ages. All right. Romans chapter 13, verse 14. But put ye on the Lord. Yasha Hamashiach, mm -hmm. also known as Christ, Come. and make not provision for the flesh Claim. to fulfill the lust thereof. Right? So you see how <coughs> making provisions of the flesh creates lust, right? Right? But I think that first part is important. Put, but put ye on the Lord Yasha Hamashiach, the Messiah or Christ. We're not doing that, right? And I don't want to be like browbeat because I'm just as guilty, right? We all in this situation, right? We all got to answer this controversy. But this is part of the problem, right? Uh, that we make not provision for the flesh, but to, f to fulfill the lust thereof. So while, while we um, falling for our temptations, um, chasing idolatry, that's creating the lust thereof. <clears throat> that's, just what, that's what this is saying, right? So now that that foundation is, is pretty much set. Like, he, he has a controversy with Yasharala. Yasharala was the people, the holy people chosen unto him to be close to him, ordained to act in a certain manner, ordained to um, execute um, certain duties, right? So now that we got that established, we got to figure out who who is responsible for even um, setting up these provisions for the flesh, right? So we know we know that's the, the adversary. We know that's the fallen one. But why is he like that? Like why is he like that? So we want to go to uh, Revelations, the Book of Revelations, chapter twelve, verse nine. Like why why he why he's so determined to to make us you know fall victim to the provisions of the flesh? Uh, Let's find out. Revelation chapter twelve, verse nine. <clears throat> And that great dragon, and the great dragon was cast out, mm -hmm. that old serpent mm -hmm. called the fallen one, mm -hmm. 
an adversary which deceiveth the whole world. Mm -hmm. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Uh, so this is why we <coughs> got to deal with the provisions for the flesh, right? This is who responsible for that, right? Because he got kicked out, right, for not being obedient, not not being willing to keep the, the, the law, statutes, and commandments as given by the Most High, right? For being disobedient. He got kicked out, him and his crew, so to speak, right? And because he got kicked out, like he has beef. That's the start of his beef, right? And who who does he have beef with? That the scriptures talk. Let's bounce to Revelation chapter twelve, verse seventeen. So he got kicked out. Him and his crew. He mad right now, right? Mm. He pissed. Mm -hmm. He pissed. He got eternal beef. Mm. He got eternal beef with the people that the holy people the most high chose, right over him, right? Y'all 17? Revelations chapter 12, verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, Israel, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. That's us. Which keep the commandments of Ahiah and have the testimony of Yahshua Hamashiach, you also known as Christ. You see that? So this is the person that's creating these, um, these situations where we fall victim to the provisions of the flesh. Right? And he's doing that because there's no way he can ever get back. There's no way he can ever get back, right? He got a one-way ticket to somewhere we don't want a part of. He know we don't want no part of that. But he gonna do everything in his power to bring us down with him, mm. right? That's what's going on here. That's what's going on here. So he's using everything in his power, right? He's using everything in his power. But let's see what he uses the most of, right? Let's go to, um, since the beginning he's been using this tactic. Let's go to James the book of James chapter 1 verse 14 the book of James chapter 1 verse 14 again this is this little study put together entitled you know make no provisions for the flesh right because when we do so you know it makes it difficult to rededicate ourselves to building our temple right <coughs> the book of James chapter 1 verse 14 and you can read it through 15 alright the book of James chapter 1 verse 14 but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, when lust has uh, conceived, mm -hmm. it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Right. Mm. So the dude in Revelation 12 and 9, and the dude in Revelation 12 and 17, he completely, he has a complete understanding of this. He know the inner workings of this inside out, top to bottom, front to back, right? He know that every man is tempted when he is drawn away from his own lust and enticed. He know that when the lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death. Death puts us down there where he going. Again, he trying to bring everybody down with him, as many as possible, right? He on a subtraction. He trying to subtract Yasharala one at a time. Right? He going to and fro on the land, seeking who he can devour, right? By temptation or idolatry or evil spirits, right? So we got to understand of who Yasharala is, what we're supposed to do as a holy people. We got a brief understanding about who's responsible for manifesting these uh, provisions for the flesh, right? So I think it will be appropriate to, to check out some examples, you know, of how that um, temptation or, or, um, provisions of the flesh manifested you know throughout the book and you know I just wanted to also say you know we got to keep in mind too <clears throat> that even though the serpent is running around you know have his spirit jumping on people causing us to fall Come. you know the only way he can even have access to do that is if we leave a door open for him right. you know other than that the you know we have to be the garrisons of our own soul Come. you know the, the, the security of our own building Come. you know what I mean Come. so that's a great point, right? And how do we fortify that, right? The instructions are given. We gotta, we gotta walk in. He said, "What do we require? What does he require?" It was, it was, it was said already, right? We gotta walk in his ways. We gotta fear him. Mm -hmm. We gotta keep the commandments that was charged to us, right? Okay. The moment we step away from that, like my Ox said, the door becomes open, mm -hmm. right? And then that provision of the fle flesh pops out, right? And then we gotta deal with some extra stuff, right? Sounds simple, but it's a daily thing. That's why Most High said, well, Shalaka, 
That's why Christ said, pick up your cross and kill the old man off daily, mm -hmm. right? It ain't no easy thing. And if I come across like it's sounding easy, that's not my intention, because I struggle. We all struggle, right? It's a marathon. Mm -hmm. But I'm just trying to give you an understanding of it, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to, we just going to, um, a little bit, <coughs> a little bit longer. I just want to give some examples um, on how, you know, the fallen one been getting at, you know, Yasharala from the beginning, right? So uh, I think the first one I want to go to, let's go to the Old Testament. Let's go to uh, Genesis chapter 3, and we can pick it up from verse 1 and go through 6. Right? <clears throat> let's see what temptation looks like, right? Temptation is a provision of the flesh. Come on. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the, uh, now the serpent <clears throat> was more subtle than any beast of the field. Mm -hmm which the Lord of Ayah had made. Mm -hmm. And when he and he, when he said unto the woman, Yea, hath the Ayah said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Let me stop it right there. You mm -hmm. see that question? It sounds like a harmful question. I mean, a harmless a harmless question, right? But that's to get you to, to, to take a different perspective about the situation, right? Let's see what she said. And, uh, verse 2, And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Stop for a second. <clears throat> right? So she already know what her parameters are, right? She already know what line not to cross, right? But he posed the question to make her think about the line that should not be crossed, right? Mm -hmm. Continue on. Verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Ahia had said, ye shall not eat of it. Again. She know the she know the line. She know the border. She know what line not to cross. Right. Mm -hmm. See what the serpent said. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall sure, ye shall not surely die. Temptation. Mm -hmm. Right. For how ye doeth know that in that uh, in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods. Knowing good and evil. You see that information he presented? Mm. How do you not think about that, right? That gets you to thinking that it's greener on the other side, mm. right? But she know the parameters that she's sustaining, right? That's the temptation. That's the first example of providing um, for provisions for the flesh. That's the first example. And also to bounce off of that, when you look at that, that was also... Um, a, 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 a lust or a desire Come. to be as a God. Come. Um, Come. Because, you know, that was presented as an opportunity. Come. You see what I'm saying? And it, from what I'm seeing, it was capitalized on the opportunity mm -hmm. because it was a desire. Come. You see what I'm saying? Come. Other than that, right. you know, it would have been like, well, that's not, I don't want to be a God. Come. You Come. know what I mean? Right. Just what I'm seeing. But even with the message he presented, like, he's, you shall be as gods, no good and evil. So he's he's presented it in a way where uh, she's going to be enticed. <coughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, bring out a... Uh, Verse 5? Mm -hmm. uh, 6. I'm six. Uh, <clears throat> Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes... See that? And a tree to be desired... See that? ...to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof... And did eat, mm. and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Mm. He got a two for one. Mm. He got a two for one. Again, he go to and fro <clears> in the <throat> land, seeking whom he can devour mm. by temptation or idolatry or by evil spirits, right? The spirit of lust is right there, right? Mm. Temptation is right there, right? If you want to be as a god, then you want idolatry right there. So you got all three. With the first example, this is in the beginning, Genesis, right? Again, he mad because he got kicked out, him and his crew. What is he going to do? He's trying to take as many of us with, he, with him as he can, right? This is the first example, right? Let's go to Exodus, Exodus uh, chapter 32. We can pick it up from 1 and again go to 6. Let's see what this man uh, providing... For the flesh, right? Making provisions for the flesh. Lock you. Exodus 32 and 1. <clears throat> All right. 
It's Exodus chapter 32, verse 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down mm -hmm. out of the mountain, out of the mount, mm -hmm. the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods. Hold on right there. That's mm -hmm. idolatry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he working already. He working already. Up, make us gods which shall go before us. For as for the, uh, for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. So, because he taken longer than they anticipated, <clears throat> their mind got them to, to want to partake in something else, right? Mm -hmm. which, which is specifically idolatry, mm -hmm. right? Continue on. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, and, uh, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them to, uh, unto me. He just condoned it. He condoned it, right? Mm -hmm. Just the priest, though. You know, he got the law, too. Continue on. And all the people break off the golden earrings, which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand mm -hmm. and fashioned it with a graven tool mm. after he had made it a molten calf. Idolatry. And they said, These be the gods, O Israel, Idolatry. which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. How did I switch that fast? These be the gods that brought <clears throat> thee up out the land of Egypt when the Most High did that. Mm -hmm. How can you switch that fast, right? We talk about not making provisions for the flesh. This is another example of making provisions of the flesh through idolatry, right? And really what this is doing is tempting the most high. That's what this is really doing, mm. right? We're going to keep them moving. Um, we're going to switch books for a minute. We're going to go to uh, the Apocrypha, and we're going to check out uh, Baruch, the book of Baruch, chapter 1. And real quick, we're going to go start at 19 all the way to 22. Again, we're almost done. We're just trying to bring you some examples of what making provisions of the flesh looks like, you know, in our history books and records. Right. Baruch chapter? Baruch chapter 1. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start at... Uh, 19 you can read it all the way through 22 and it's just as about this is like a recap of what's been happening to our people since the beginning up to this current dawn all right baruch chapter 1 verse 19 mm -hmm. since the day that the lord brought our forefathers out of the land of egypt since that day mm -hmm. oh slack it since the day that the Lord brought our forefathers out of the land of uh -huh. Egypt onto this present unto day, this present day, we have been disobedient unto the Lord of our, our, of our. Hold father. on, we've been what? Disobedient <sighs> unto the Lord our power, and we have been uh, negligent in not hearing His voice, right? His requirements. God. Wherefore the evils cleaved unto us, and the curse which the Lord appointed by Moses, his servant at the time, his servant. that he brought our, fa our fathers out of the land of Egypt mm -hmm. to give us a land that flowereth with milk and honey, like as it is to see this day. Yes, we hope to see it. Nevertheless, we have not hearkened unto the voice of the Lord our power, Stiff neck. according unto all the words of, of the prophets, whom he sent on to us. That's a wealth of information, hmm. of positive information that we got that we we got that to lean on to get us through, so we don't make provisions for the flesh. Okay. Right. But every man followed the imagination of his own wicked heart hmm. to serve strange gods and to do evil in the sight of the Lord our power. Get that twenty two one more time. It's idolatry. Hmm. But every man followed the imagination of his own wicked heart. To serve strange gods and to do evil in the sight of the Lord, our power. See? Provisions of the flesh. Uh, right? From the beginning uh, of Egypt, when we came out of Egypt, as it is to this present day. Uh, so uh, we can't really be surprised why the Most High got a controversy. When he said, hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. 
for the Lord has a controversy with because there is no mercy. You know what I mean? So we shouldn't be no surprise, right? No truth, no knowledge of a higher in the land, right? No surprise why he has a controversy. Um, I got a little preset I wanted to bring on that real Come. quick. Um, so, what was it? Mac, uh, that was a uh, Peru. Come. Uh, I'm gonna read that real quick, and I just want to read this preset. Uh huh. <coughs> So Baruch 1 and 22, it says, But every man followed the imagination of his own wicked heart uh -huh. to serve strange gods and to do evil in the sight of the Lord our power. Um, you know, I just wanted to bounce off what you were saying because, you know, if you look in the book of Judges, that was a point in time where we didn't have uh, uh, any, uh, any leadership mm -hmm. to kind of push us in the proper direction um, and help us do, you know, what we needed to do mm -hmm. because of our... You know, us falling and getting back up and falling, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Doing our own thing. Yeah, and, you know, in the book of Judges, it says very clearly that, you know, uh, people were doing what was right in their own eyes. And, you know, that, like we mentioned earlier, we got to <laughs> be the, the security of our own building. Come. You know, uh, Yasha Hamashiach, also known as Christ, has given us a way to go. But it's always safe for us to deal with what is there. Come. Anything else becomes, can be uh, the lust of our own imagination, you know, of, of, of our own mm -hmm. desires. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a straight. Come. Come. And this is a little precept right here. This is 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. <clears throat> Matter of fact, I'll start from verse 3. Um, Real quick. Yep. All right. Um, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. <laughs> For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through a higher, mm -hmm. that uh, to the pulling down of strongholds, the strongholds are these things that keep us down. Uh -huh. Like, uh, you know, Brother Yako's mentioning, you know, the, the lust, the desires, the the, the, um, the imagination, the idolatry, you know, the idolatry uh -huh. all of those things. Uh -huh. um, those those are strongholds because it, it, it allows us to do things mm -hmm. that, may not be convenient for our salvation. You know what I mean? It opens the door to make us uh, make provisions for the flesh. Kind, kind. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, <clears throat> at the end of the day, it's, it's kind of nervous because even though we see certain things and we know that, uh, you know, we, we have grace, you know, that we still have to be, you know, laser focused Come. with the what's here. Come. You know what I mean? And anything else, you got to kind of be, you know, really skeptical about it okay. um, because it could be imagination. Okay. Uh, verse 5, it says, uh, 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, it says, Casting down imaginations mm -hmm. and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Hmm. See, so this book is the knowledge of the Most High. Okay. So if these things are not here, you know, it, I, I would say it's probably safe not to you know, to dibble and dabble in those things because it would become imagination and it could be something that's within ourselves that we want to do. Uh, you know, um, it says here, uh, bring, and bringing into, I'm going to start from five again, mm -hmm. casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, I just wanted to bounce off of that precept yeah. in Baruch 1 and 22. Powerful, man. <clears throat> you know. Powerful. Just reinforcing that we need to be obedient to Yasha, right? Yeah. So we don't fall subject to those uh, provisions of the flesh, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I think more dangerous, like you said, your own imaginations, right? Yeah. And Baruch as well. Yeah. Right? Can I get verse 6 on there too? Yeah. Verse 6, it says, And having in readiness to revenge all disobedience, like what you were just saying. When your obedience is fulfilled, so man, this is what that's right there telling you is that <laughs> by us being obedient to the Most High, there's going to be a point of revenge right. against the disobedience. Come. Come. You see what I'm saying? We know that's when right. Christ comes back. We don't want to be on the wrong side of that. Come, come. Come. So you know, woo. man, the water for that. Man, praise the Most High. That hammer at home. Yeah. Um, so I just want to. Uh, just give some more examples of what um, 
because we got examples of what it, you know temptation looks looks like looked like in uh, Genesis, um, idolatry in Exodus. Um, you know, Baruch told us about temptation and idolatry. Um, but I just want to touch on what the spirits look like, right? Because we we deal with the spirits every day. Uh, most people not even knowing that it's that it's a spirit, right? So I just want to touch on that, just just to let that be known what that looks like in the world that we live in today, right? So we're going to go to Galatians chapter 5, and we'll just read it from 19 to 21. So Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, mm -hmm. fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, mm -hmm. witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, mm -hmm. wrath, strife. Mm -hmm. seditions, heresies, uh -huh. envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have to also told you in time past, mm -hmm. that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Ahia. Right. So we just looked at what provisions of the flesh look mm -hmm. like, right? The various forms, right? It ain't just no one thing. It's all these things, right? <coughs> that fall upon people all the time, right? In the Hebrew community and out the Hebrew community, right? Everybody's subject to that. So this is something we got to guard against because, again, the devil going to and fro in the land seeking, seeking to whom he can devour, right? Mm -hmm. Through these various spirits, right? So uh, we're going to keep it moving. Let's go to um, we got here? First Corinthians chapter 10 and we can pick it up from chap chapters of Salakia, verse 6. All right. Go, first, go through 13, I'm sorry. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things. Clearly. As they also lusted. Mm -hmm. Neither be ye idolaters, mm -hmm. as were some of them, mm -hmm. as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Mm -hmm. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Man. Neither let us tempt Hamashiach, Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Mm -hmm. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for end samples, mm. and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Right. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. I mean, pay attention wow. to all these examples right? wow. in these modern times. Pay attention. Uh, and it's, this is powerful too because if you're standing on your own imagination, man, yeah, I was don't just say that. Up, right? Girl. You can't do what you want to do. That's you can't powerful. make your own calls. Oh, Come man. On. Verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Mm -hmm. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Mm -hmm. But a higher is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, right. but will make the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Right. Wow. So this is the silver line behind everything, right? This this should give us like reassurance. Like if we can hold fast and endure, we can make it through because he won't give us nothing we can't handle. Right? We gotta know that. When the, when the spirits of Galatians chapter 5, 19 and 21 come about, right? Or when we look at all these examples, how the people uh, sat down to eat, drink, and rose to play, really not following the statutes, laws, and commandments that were required, right, um, in Deuteronomy, right? This gives us some hope, or it should give, it gives me hope for sure, yeah. but it should give us hope, right? Hey, you know, just to bounce off, man, verse 12 is a powerful verse, bro, because it just really lets you know, like, uh, you know, Sirach 43 and 30, where they talk about we can never do enough. Right. You know what I'm saying? And right. this right here is letting you know 
Um, to me, it, it's, it has many layers to this, man. Um, wherefore, let him that thinketh he stand it take heed lest he fall. Don't ever be over secure and thinking right. that you're secure. Super confident. You can never do enough and right. continue to do what we have to do, man. Uh -huh. And, you know, the scriptures like this, you know, for me is why I, I, a lot of times I just try to stick with what's in front of me the best that I can. Because, you know, standing on, I, I think we can never go wrong on standing, what's, standing on what's in the book. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Hands down. And that's just powerful, man. And, you know, hopefully this is a fuel God. just to not be content. Right. You know what I mean? But well, that's the beauty of fellowship, too, because we got one another to, to remind us that, yo, don't get too confident. Don't get God. too complacent. Right? That's the we don't want to be on the other bro. side of that, right? Yeah. Right? But, you know, <clears throat> to tie it, tie it back into the, to the, to the study, right? So these, these are the things, like these examples that we've just... Um, share with you these are the things that's happening in the world as it as we speak right this is why he says this in hosea you know chapter 4 verse 1 right mm -hmm. right this is why he's saying those things right and so i want to go to jeremiah chapter 4 verse 22 <coughs> right because he, he he has beef with us right from hosea 4 and 1 right he's got to be frustrated with us right frustrated and patient at the same time Great and terrible power, right? All praise to the Most High. He's so merciful. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 22. For my people is foolish. Mm -hmm. They have not known me. Mm -hmm. They are sottish children, mm -hmm. and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. Right? You know why? Because like I said, they so into doing their own imagination. Right, mm. not knowing that following your own imagination opens that door to make provisions for the flesh wow. that puts you on the, the other side of the equation, right? So this is the most high, like frustrated, right? He said, "My people is foolish; they have not known me, but they have. We still know him. We just disobedient. You mm. know what I'm saying? We just disobedient, and that's that's the problem right there, right? Um, so." That in a nutshell is the study. I just want to close it out by just bringing out some scripts that will help us like loosen the grip of the fallen one and things that, you know, it's my prayer and hope that encourage us, you know, to, to kind of stay on the right path, right? Um, let's see. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10, and we'll start at 22, and you can go through 23. Right. Again, this is how we... This is how we um, regain our our leverage in this whole spiritual war, right? Because like like Akasab lesson last night, right? We got to rededicate ourselves to building our temple, which is our, our earthly bodies, right? And mm -hmm. Our spiritual bodies, right? So hopefully these scriptures, you know, resonate to encourage you to kind of apply these scriptures so we can, <coughs> you know, stay in that process of rebuilding our temple. Because again, that's a daily thing, right? Nothing's easy about it, but you know we're here to exhort onto good work, works, Salakia. You know, and Isaiah said we gotta, you know, reclaim Israel and Jacob, right? We gotta bring them back. So that's what this is about. Uh, Hebrews chapter ten, verse twenty-two. Hebrews chapter ten, verse twenty-two. Let us draw near with a true heart mm -hmm. in full assurance of faith, mm -hmm. having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. Mm -hmm. And our bodies washed with pure water. Come. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith mm -hmm. without wavering, for he is faithful that is that promise. Come. Remember, we was ordained to do something, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, we've gotten away from that, right? So what we got to do? We got to draw near with a true heart, right? Nobody's perfect. You know, we're trying to get it right. So we confess to the Father our faults, you know, our sins, and beg for mercy continuously, mm -hmm. right? That he puts a true heart so we can walk in his ways, right? Um, I think with that true heart, there's got to be a high level of fear, right? There's got to be a high level of fear to walk with a true heart. Because again, you know, I don't want to be on the wrong side of this, man, so I'm just chopping at the tree. That's just me speaking for myself. And my hope is that, you know, this lesson encourages others to do the same, right? It says, let us hold fast to our profession, right? This will, this will we have to do 
um, because we are that chosen people. We are that chosen people, right? We got to do this stuff, all right? Um, let's bounce to First Peter's chapter 1. Uh, you can pick it up at 13 and go through 14. All right. First Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, mm -hmm. be sober, mm -hmm. and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you mm -hmm. at the revelation of Yahshua Hamashiach. So, so we keep chopping at the tree, waiting on the Hamashiach to come back, and hopefully on the right side of this thing. Uh, as obedient children, mm -hmm. not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. Right. So in a new man, we don't deal with this kind of stuff, mm -hmm. right? So if we obedient, like he says, then we kill off that old man, right? Which we're instructed to do. Like, we got to do that, right? The moment we do that or start the process of doing that, then the controversy lessens, right? He got less of a controversy with us because we move <coughs> in the right direction. Come. Mm, come. All right. Um. We're going to stay in 1 Peter's, but let's go to chapter 2, uh, verse 1 and 2, right? So we gird up our loins, right? We uh, we set our heart aright, um, you know, in, two, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22, right? So now we're coming into 1 Peter's chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Uh, All right, we need to apply this too. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice, all guile, mm -hmm and hypocrisy mm -hmm. and envies and all evil speakings mm -hmm. as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word mm -hmm. that ye may grow thereby Come. so if we want this controversy to stop like we gotta start all over like we gotta always consider starting all over you know as much knowledge as we get we come across the scriptures with some new um, insight then we gotta you know seek that 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 milk you know, sincere milk of the word. That's what that is, starting all over. It's not a bad thing, but it's just reevaluating the scripts and the information therein. You know what I'm saying? Chapter uh, Verse 1 says, laying aside all malice, all guile, all hypocrisy, hypocrisies, and envies and evil speaks, right? No truth, right? If we, if we, if we operate in, in this verse right here, there ain't no truth. There ain't no mercy. That's part you you part of the controversy if you operate <coughs> like that, right? So we don't keep it moving. Um, let's go to the book of Colossians, in chapter two, and we'll start at verse six. You can read it through verse seven. Again, just to you know, keep the spirit up in Yasharala. Like you know, it's spiritual war. It's it's a marathon. You know, we acknowledge that you know, the Lord does have a controversy with us. You know, being Israel, and rightfully so, but it ain't all doom and gloom. You know what I'm saying? We could do some things to be proactive to turn it around. So that's what these scriptures hopefully uh, will resonate. The Book of Colossians, uh, chapter two, uh, verse six and seven. <clears throat> Chapter 2, verse 6. Come. You can read it through 7. Alright. So, this is Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. As ye have therefore received uh, Hamashiach, Yasha, the Lord, mm -hmm. so walk ye in him. So we got to walk with him because we, we know what he about. We know the instructions. He say, um, put every put everything down and follow after him. Mm -hmm. Don't kill a old man all daily, right? Mm -hmm. So we got... I don't want to say a blueprint, but we do have specific instructions as to how to operate, okay. right? Uh, rooted and built up in him, mm -hmm. established in the faith, mm -hmm. as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. God, he the cornerstone. Everything is supposed to, you know, start from him, right? Come. <clears throat> All right. Um, we, got, we got two more. Uh, let's go to Ephesians uh, chapter 2. Verse 19, and you can read it through 22. So again, these this is the mindset, well, I should say this, the scriptures give us the mindset to combat or lessen that controversy and to combat, you know, that fallen one in Revelation chapter 12, verse 9 and verse 17, right? So uh, Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verse 19, 
All right, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. <clears throat> and it reads, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens mm -hmm. with the saints, mm -hmm. and the household of Ahia, uh. and of the household of, uh, of Ahia, Salaki, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Yasha Hamashiach himself being the chief cornerstone. See, everything starts with him. In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth onto a holy temple in the Lord. Mm -hmm. In whom ye also are builded together for an uh, for a habitation of a higher through the Spirit. God. So we got this scripture uh, last night from Brother Kassab, right? Our Kassab, right? So everybody doing a part to get on the right side of this thing and to build up the body of Yasha, right? So as we are working on ourselves, you know, to, to, to progress, that progression, you know, ultimately affects everybody, right? So it's a team thing, right? Even though we're working on ourselves, it works out to be a team thing, right? Um, and the last one, uh, we're going to go to first, back to First Peter's. Uh, chapter 4, verse 17. This will close out the study. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 4, verse 17. 1 <clears throat> Peter, chapter 4, verse 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of Ahiah. Mm -hmm. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of Ahiah? Come. So you got a choice. You got a choice, right? Wow. <clears throat> so again, the name of the study is making no provision for the flesh, right? Because when we do that, we jeopardize or slow down or or possibly even end the possibility of uh, rededicating to build our temple, which is Yasha, right? So we got to make a choice uh, to endure and, and, and run the marathon. The other alternative is death, right? Because again, you know, the fallen one, he's going to and fro in the land, seeking to whom he can devour, right? So again, make no provisions for the flesh. And uh, it is my hope and prayer that these scriptures resonate, at least encourage um, some fellowship, and so we can, you know, attack this thing together. Mm. You know, again, uh, Appreciate all of Akiyam, you know what I'm saying, Yashawala checking in, and again, uh, my name is Yaakov, and uh, all praise to the Most High, Ahaya, Shur Ahaya, Ahishim Yasha, Kakamawa, Shur Ahaya, 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 Shur 